Did you know that the city of Tampa has its own archives? We store and care for a diverse collection of local treasures, from mayor's papers to old photographs, memorabilia, and real archaeological artifacts. Stay tuned, I want to share with you a piece of Tampa history that I know you'll enjoy. Welcome back. I'm Jennifer Dietz, Archives and Records Manager at the City of Tampa. Archives and Records is a division of the Tampa City Clerk's Office, so you'll understand why today's piece is so important to me. This plaque is from the 1993 rededication of the Archives and Records building, which was located at 1104 East Twig Street. The plaque was made to rename the building after Frances Enriquez, who was the first woman to be elected city clerk of the city of Tampa and was instrumental in creating the Archives and Records Division. Frances Enriquez was born in Tampa and attended local schools. She began her career in the city clerk's office in 1954. In 1962, Mayor Julian Lane appointed her deputy city clerk and she served in that position for 11 years. In 1973, Frances Enriquez was elected to the Office of City Clerk in a special election. She won the election garnering 78% of the vote and became the first woman and first Hispanic to hold the position. She was the last city clerk to be elected by popular vote. In 1974, the position was changed from an elected post to one appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the city council. The City of Tampa's Archives and Records Division was established under the leadership of Francis Enriquez and the adoption of Ordinance Number 6152A on April 29, 1975. In 1983, the Archives and Records Division moved into its own building on 1104 East Twig Street. This building had originally belonged to Miller Machinery. When Frances retired in September of 1993, the building was named for her in honor of her contribution to the creation of Archives and Records Services. A plaque was installed onto the side of the building, officially naming it as Frances Enriquez Archives and Records Services Building. In 2002, Archives and Records moved to a new location at 1102 North Florida Avenue, a location shared by other city departments. The plaque was put into storage and the building on Twig Street was raised to make room for the Hillsborough County Expressway Authority. This plaque is significant because it reflects the establishment of our Archives and Records Division and honors Frances Enriquez for her significant contributions to the City of Tampa. But I really want to learn more about this plaque, so I'm going to visit Rodney Kaipal, local historian at the Tampa Bay History Center. Tampa Bay History Center, home to more than 60,000 artifacts, and we are with an expert on local history, Rodney Kite Powell. Hi, Rodney. Hey, how are you? Good. Thanks so much for talking with us today. Sure. So I have something new to share with you today. We found this plaque in our city archives, and we know it came from the old Archives and Records building that was dedicated to Francis Enriquez, but we would love to find out more about it. What can you tell us about the role of the city clerk in Tampa government? Well, uh, Frances Enriquez was city clerk from 1973 to 1993, and uh, she was the first uh, woman city clerk for the city of Tampa and the first Latin city clerk for the city of Tampa. And uh, the city clerk has a very important role in city government. Uh, she also was the, the last elected city clerk, and they're now appointed by the mayor. But, uh, but even though she was elected, now they're appointed, the role really hasn't changed a whole lot. Uh, they sign the important ordinances, they keep track of the ordinances that are passed, they keep track of city council uh, meeting minutes. They really are kind of the, the backbone really to city government. And I know it's been a historic role in Tampa. It goes back pretty far. Can you tell us about some of the previous city clerks? Yeah, we've had city clerks as long as we've had a city of Tampa, and there have been some really interesting ones over the years. Uh, the first city clerk was a man named William Ashley, and he was important, one, for that role, but also he is very symbolic of, of kind of early racial beliefs in Tampa, at least some racial beliefs in Tampa, before the Civil War. He actually had a, uh, uh, was married basically to his slave, and they are now buried together in the same grave. 
at Oakland Cemetery, and the headstone has really a wonderful story about that. The headstone was written by John Jackson, an early mayor of Tampa, a good friend of William Ashley's, and the guy who drew the first maps of Tampa. Wow. Uh, the, uh, another really interesting story about city clerks, and it also goes to the function of the city clerk, is a man named John Henderson. And if anybody has an old cigar box that was cigars from Tampa, right. they turn that cigar box over, they'll see his signature, John Henderson, and they'll also see the city seal. The city seals in the bottom of cigar boxes that were produced from 1901 really through the 1950s, and that was as a way to prove that those cigars were boxed in Tampa, made in Tampa. And so the city, uh, excuse me, the cigar manufacturers actually appealed to the city, and they said, you know, we've got to have a way to prove that our cigars are made in Tampa. And so the city council actually granted permission for the seal to be placed in the bottom of those boxes. But for it to be official, the city clerk had to sign it. And so you see the reproduced signature of John Henderson on millions of cigar boxes. Wow. There was a subsequent city clerk in the 1930s who I guess got a little tired of seeing somebody else's name on these boxes, a guy named Ricardez. And so he had the cigar manufacturers replace Henderson's name with his own name. Another interesting city clerk is a man named John Darling. He was really important in Tampa's pioneer history. Uh, he was a partner with a guy named Thomas Kennedy in the Kennedy and Darling store, which was really the first major store here in the village of Tampa and in the city of Tampa. Before the Civil War, and at the very beginning of the Civil War, John Darling was also the city clerk. And uh, very clever on his part, he arranged the sale of a cannon and some uh, ammunition and some gunpowder to the city of Tampa from the Kennedy and Darling store. And he himself signed the IOU as a city clerk to his own store. The interesting part of that story is a few years ago, a descendant of the Kennedy family actually sued the city of Tampa uh, for the debt that was owed. It was never paid as far as anybody knew. And there was an interest a portion put on the, the bill. And so the, with interest, the bill had gone into millions of dollars now. Originally it was 800 something dollars, um, but now it was millions of dollars. And the city never paid a horse that out. There's a lot of different reasons for that, including the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, but also the city of Tampa that John Darling was a city clerk for technically isn't the same city of Tampa that exists today because we had that period between 1869 and 1887 where there was no city of Tampa. Um, but it's interesting that, uh, which something could never happen today, where a city clerk could sign an IOU for a, a city purchase from the store that he actually owns. That's incredible. It, it's so interesting to find out how the office has changed over the years. And the Archives and Records building that was named after Francis Enriquez. Do you ever remember going there to do research or visiting? Yeah, no, I remember the, uh, that Archives building on Twig Street very well. Uh, I have to admit, and I feel really bad about this, I don't remember ever seeing the plaque that is really kind of the, the important part of, of, of your, your program and your, your research here. Um, but I was in that building a hundred times probably, either at meetings or doing research uh, at the city archives, which is a imp very important function of, of the city clerk's office. And it's important to remember that uh, Ms. Enriquez was the person to establish the first city archive in the state of Florida. And so the very forward thinking of her and uh, the, the things that, uh, that you all have at the city archives are incredibly important from the old minute books going back to the first city of Tampa in the 1850s to minute books that I used in my research for Davis Islands in the 19 teens and 1920s, uh, plus all kinds of other really important things, uh, historic artifacts, just some wonderful things you all have down there. Thank you so much, Rodney. You've been incredibly helpful. And I just have one more person to visit before I can put this back into the archives. Old City Hall in downtown Tampa where Francis Enriquez spent 20 years as Tampa City Clerk and today I have the honor of speaking personally with Mrs. Enriquez. Francis thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me it's a pleasure to be here. So Francis we found this plaque in our Archives and Records mm -hmm. division and as you can see this was when the building was named after you in 1993 and when I found this I realized how instrumental you were in founding the Archives and Records Division which was the very first municipal archive in the state of Florida. Can you tell me more about that? Well during that time uh, there was no uh, way for, to keep records uh, in each department. Every department did their own thing after each administration they either pack up the records and put them away or they disposed of them and uh, consequently there was really no history. Right. 
and uh, with no history there can be no future. Yeah. I've always thought about uh, having getting something done to, 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 to centralize all this work and, and uh, so uh, all the records and um, uh, was done at the uh, archives at that time when it was initiated and uh, we um, hired uh, an archivist Clara Cardina was at that time, uh, mm. the rec records manager and archivist. And uh, later on, the position was created for a, an archivist to come in and fill that position. Curtis Welch came in and uh, was appointed. And through them, r uh, all the records of the city of Tampa went to that department and they were, retention schedules were made for them. In other words, records were, uh, uh, said this record was going to be kept so many years, this record was going to be thrown out, this record was going to be microfilmed. We had all the departments relying on the, the record center to uh, dispose of their records. And through that we also had um, a silver recovery program that generated uh, money for the city. Oh wow, I didn't know about yes, that. Yes, through, yeah, through the micrographics. We had uh, sil the silver that came out of microfilming records. We also uh, uh, sold the uh, records that were supposed to be disposed. We didn't burn them. We went ahead and, and sold them and, and it, it, it collected money for the city. So a lot of little uh, buy things came out from the uh, from uh, the records management program. That is incredible, and you have done the city such a service with that. Wow. It, uh, I had an idea, but an idea doesn't come about until somebody puts it to work, and that was Clara Condina and, uh, and uh, Curtis Welch oh, and the people that worked there. Because of the program, the city uh, uh, saved $2.5 million wow. in savings, of uh, space savings and uh, files and things like that. So there was a big savings also. Do you remember what it was like when they named the building after you? Oh my goodness. Let me think. I was driven there in a limousine. Can you oh, imagine wow. a limousine? And uh, I didn't know I was going to uh, be taken there. And uh, when I got down, all these people were there. Uh, the mayor was there and my friends and a lot of city uh, department heads and city council and I was wondering what's going on here. <laughs> the mayor came up to me and presented me with this resolution naming the building after me. Was it a surprise then? You it didn't was, know? I was speechless. I couldn't talk. In fact, uh, I'm still trembling from thinking about it. Oh, it was incredible. just like Christmas morning. <laughs> I bet. No, that is a wonderful, wonderful yes. thing, especially what, for your retirement. Yes, it was. After 20 years of serving as city clerk. Yeah. So yeah. you were the first a woman to be elected as city clerk in Tampa, which is an amazing accomplishment. Y yes, it was. Uh, I uh, ran against Four, four men, very, very, they were a gentleman, you know, and I won the first uh, go around. So uh, again, I have to thank the people of the city of Tampa for that. What was it like back then? I know you started in the 50s in yes. the city clerk's office, right? 1954. Wow, that's incredible. Can you tell oh, us gosh. what it was like at that time? Well, let's see, I, when I went into the building, the office, <laughs> In the hallway, there was a light bulb hanging from a wire, and that was a light in the hallway. Oh, wow. And when I went into the office, there was linoleum on the floor. The air conditioner was a unit in the window. And I looked around, and it was, there was three men in there, and the office was run by three men. The city clerk, the deputy clerk, and the clerk typist. They were all men. Oh, wow. Who was the city clerk at that time? Mr. Bacardis. OK, oh, and he, he did like 20 clerk. years, oh, right? he was there forever. <laughs> Yes, he was. And from there, being a clerk typist, uh, in 1963, when this deputy city clerk uh, retired, uh, the city clerk at that time was um, Bill Stark. Mm. And he urged me to, to, to try and, and go for the position of deputy city clerk. And so even the mayor said, yeah, try, you know, go for it. So I did. 
and uh, Mayor Julian Lane appointed me deputy city clerk. Oh, wow. In uh, 1963, I believe. Wow, so you were deputy city clerk for 10 years before becoming city clerk. Right, right. In Everything sort of happened in 10 years increments. Isn't that funny? It is. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but, uh, but a lot of people didn't, didn't think that was a good idea. They, they thought the city clerk position should be that of a man, you know, a man's oh. position. That was it, the thinking during that time, but uh, that's, that was the norm during that time. That was so, probably a challenge to work through the opposition. Yes, so I, yeah, so I had to, you know, really pr try to prove myself. After Mr. Stark retired in 73, again, the mayor urged me to run. Now, this was, had, had, I had to run for this. <laughs> you funny for an elected office. So you did a campaign and everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Anyhow, Mayor uh, Dick Greco brought me into his office and uh, he told me you've got to run for the office. I said I can't run for the office. I, mean, I don't know anything about politics you know as far as running for office but I did run for the office and lo and behold I was elected. And you were the last one to be elected because now the position is appointed I believe. Yes right? it, yes it is and when the which I I, uh, I went ahead and thought that was a good idea because um, the office isn't, uh, shouldn't be a political office. Right. When the position got to be uh, uh, appointed, the mayor appointed me uh, department head of that uh, department, and uh, I was the first department head in the city of Tampa, which I'm also proud of being. Oh, I didn't even realize yes, that. That's first amazing. First department head. Oh, wow. Woman department head, rather. Yes. <laughs> you had mentioned earlier, you had, when we were, you know, setting up you told an interesting story about this flag that we have in city council here and how you found the flag, the city flag. Can you tell me about that? Well, during that time, uh, we, the, where the clock was at, which was way up on the top floor, the um, uh, maintenance man used to take care of the clock. He used to go up there every day and wind it up, wind it up, because that clock had to, had to be running. And uh, there was a lot of old furniture there. And uh, he was looking through the furniture because they had told him he had to get rid of all, they wanted to uh, redo that area or something. He had to get rid of all the old furniture. He came and down with me and he says, Francis, he says, I, I found this, it was in, like in a bag, this material. And he says, and it looks like a flag. He says, and I don't know what to do with it. So I looked at it and during that time, um, I wasn't city clerk, at, uh, and I, I thought if I was deputy clerk at that time. And I said, well, let me look at it. And it was this, an old original city flag, wow. along with the paperwork of how it got to be the city flag. Wow. So I said, well, let me, let me keep it. And so I put it away, too, and kept it for him, because he said he didn't want to throw it away. I said, no, no, you don't want to throw that away. When I got to be... Uh, Deputy City Clerk, I, I brought it out and uh, we uh, had it uh, mounted and and from then all these new these city flags that you see now were made from that original. That's an incredible find and it's a perfect example about why we need a City of Tampa archive. Thank you so much for coming today. We've missed seeing you on a regular basis and it's been great to learn about archives and records and how it started and I just can't thank you enough. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure, and it's been a pleasure talking with you. We'll be right back. Thank you for joining us for Out of the Archives. Tampa has such a rich history, and it's been fun sharing it with you. To learn more about Tampa's history, visit the Tampa Bay History Center, located at 801 Old Water Street. For all of us in City of Tampa's Archives and Records Division, I'm Jennifer Dietz.